December 25th, uh, 1776, uh, George Washington's army was preparing to cross the Delaware. And it was the uh, folks from Marblehead that were actually manning those boats that took them across. Uh, what a lot of people probably don't know is that uh, that night was particularly cold, it was particularly windy, and uh, in that uh, intestinal fortitude it took to get that army across in the middle of the night so that they could march the rest of the night uh, into Trenton and surprise the Hessians there, and really uh, the first big win uh, that really turned the tide of the Revolutionary War. And, uh, and a lot of those first started here in Marblehead, so a lot of significance uh, in history overall. But after that, uh, a little less than about 150 years later, so fast forward, there's a young man about 27 years old by the name of Alfred Cunningham. And in uh, uh, 1911, uh, actually 1909, he was uh, commissioned as second lieutenant uh, in the Marine Corps. But he knew already because he had seen uh, aviation from the balloon perspective and knew there were applications uh, for how we might use that in the Marine Corps. So in uh, 09 to 11, when he started lobbying really hard before there was a marine aviation uh, to get aviation to the Marine Corps, uh, he finally won that bid. And in 1912, uh, early May, about the 14th, he got orders uh, to a place called Annapolis, which was the first aviation camp. And in so doing, became the first marine aviator, though he hadn't flown yet, because that's where this place comes back into play. So uh, on the 22nd, he reports in, he does some training, and uh, by the 20th of August, he's told to report down here, because in those days, you couldn't go to a base and jump in an airplane and have a flight instructor teach you how to fly. The only guys that knew how to fly were the manufacturers. And there was a, uh, a Starling Burgess who had a factory right there. And uh, he did, uh, uh, up to that point, a lot of uh, yacht building. And so it was kind of applicable, because the airplanes that he was so interested in building uh, they called them the flying fish. So that's kind of the boat uh, airplane tie in there. And so Cunningham shows up here and he gets trained. In two hours and 40 minutes was his flight instruction uh, for flying that uh, Burgess Curtis uh, flying fish. So he gets out on this, on this cove in here, uh, probably the smoothest water around. After two hours and 40 minutes, you can imagine he's probably a little nervous. And he actually talks about this a little later on. And he puts the throttle to it, and he starts to pick up speed, and soon he starts to escape the gravity and the pull of the water, and he's airborne. You'd think maybe, hey, I started flying, I think I'll, uh, I'll land at some point, but uh, he'd never done that before. <laughs> and by his own admission, he's trying to get up enough uh, courage to land the airplane, and he's watching the gas gauge start to click down. And pretty soon, it's right on empty, and he goes, well, it's now or never. And so he decides to go ahead and put it down, and luckily it was successful, and all he had to say was, well, I guess that was pretty good, being as my first solo, and I've only seen two other people land an airplane before. <laughs> so uh, that began marine uh, aviation in earnest, and that's what makes Marblehead so important to us in the birthplace, because that spurred a lot of firsts. Marblehead was in involved with a lot of firsts, well, so was marine aviation. Uh, marine aviation since then has gone to amazing heights. Uh, Cunningham. Uh, through being the first Marine Squadron Commander, actually commanded what we would call today the first group or the first Marine Aviation Force and went to France and, uh, and learned how to uh, bomb and resupply and, and do those things that support that Marine on the ground because before he even started flying, he knew that's what it was all about, supporting the Marine on the ground. So that was a first throughout history, uh, throughout all the conflicts since then, uh, from the introduction of uh, the first uh, medevac uh, operations in 1928, and the first Lieutenant Schilt, another Marine in combat in Nicaragua. Uh, the introduction of our first helicopters in 1948 to HMX-1 that started a new era in aviation for the Marine Corps. Uh, and after that, flying the first jump jets, or the uh, Harrier uh, AV-8A in uh, 1968, and Lieutenant General Miller, three years later, we, start, we started fielding those jump jets in the, uh, uh, in the Marine Corps, in the first Marine Force uh, to see the utility of that. Since then, we've also fielded the MV-22 out there, uh, which is our tilt rotor aircraft, yeah. which a lot of people looked at and said, why are you doing that? It's because the Marine Corps knew uh, that there was something more that aviation had to give that it couldn't give today. So the ability to fly around at the speed of an airplane but land like a helicopter 
it, it's not only about getting Marines to the fight, but it's getting Marines out of the fight when they've been injured or, uh, or seriously injured and get them back to medical care. So the Marine Corps has always been looking ahead. And, and that legacy continues to today. Uh, in fact, it was January 11th of this year uh, that the first set of uh, Lightning Twos, the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, taxied into the line at Eglin Air Force Base to become the first Marine Corps uh, Stovall airplanes and the first supersonic Stovall airplane, uh, which is short takeoff vertical landing is what it uh, means. Uh, but that was the first time uh, that the Marine Corps uh, has fielded these airplanes and the first in the world. So what you have now is uh, the first training squadron already standing up and the first fleet squadron stands up this year, which is uh, BMF A-121 in Yuma. So a lot of firsts throughout history, and the Marine Corps continues to go strong. But I'll tell you, the, if the last hundred years are any indication of what Marine Corps aviation has to offer its nation, it has to offer these Marines out here and these Marines that are aviators, uh, I'll tell you, the next hundred years, I'll bet you are going to be even brighter uh, because we are certainly on that glide path. So again, thank you for coming out. This is truly a significant day. Marblehead plays a huge part in that, uh, and it's an incredible day to celebrate. Thank you. Well, I guess I better do something. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us are sort of sitting here.